the information I'm given on the exam paper says information about tours and bookings is stored in the database train travelers. I'm going to open the database. Open the table client. First I have to say options, enable. Okay, here's the client table. Look at the design of the table. Here is design view. We click it. Some field names are coded. TD, driving a train. MV stands for museum visit. EL is evening lecture and ES engine shed visit. These fields use the yes no data type. You can see that here. Sort the client table in ascending order of tour number. So we have to go to data view. Here's tour number. I'm going to right click and sort in alphabetical order. Double click and now we can see that it's 20 records and this is in alphabetical order. So now we have to show evidence for our results. And to do that, I'm going to make sure that we see the amount of records. Now we print screen by clicking the print screen button on the keyboard. We open a Word document and we're going to paste the image there. We do need to crop it. So we're going to press crop on picture tools and make sure that the amount of records can be seen down here. This should be good. And now always drag from the corners. And this shows perfectly the table and that it's sorted. You might have opened, it would be better to open this, um, this field a little bit more so we can see the whole field name. And this is the first task and it gave two marks. And uh, you have to make sure in the Word document that you insert your candidate number and your center number and everything that they ask for. Now the next, next task for the database is the management of train travelers needs a list of children who are booked for tours. Use your database software to run a search on the client table to find all children. They tell you show only the tour number, surname and initial fields in this order. So what I'm going to do is I have to close the table because it's the only way you can create a search. And uh, I'm going to save my table, create, query design, add the table, close this one. And now we're going to add the fields that were asked for, tour number, surname, and initial. Now as we have to find all the children that are booked, we have to add this field. Now I'm going to run it to see the data that comes up. And as we can see, C stands for child and A for adult. So we know what to put in the criteria field. Here's the criteria field, and I place a C there, which means that only the children will come up, and there are 11. Okay, we're going to increase the size. Now, it did tell us to only show these three fields. So I'm going to have to hide the adult child field or column. So I go to the design view and I'm going to take the tick from show adult child. And now I get the exact same amount of records, only the adult child field is hidden. Now we can print screen the table as we're going to have to show evidence for our results. So I press the print screen button on the keyboard, open the Word document, control V to paste the information. Click on Picture Tools and I'm going to crop the image. And as always, always show the record amount. If not, you won't get the marks, the full marks. And for this task, you could get three marks. And this is exactly how it should look like. Now, when you save a query, you have to make sure that you name it QRY. And the name would be child in this case, or children. And you can see QRY child, this is the right naming convention. But they were only asking for the query results, so we don't have to worry about that. Now the next task says, you need a list of clients who are booked for the evening lecture or the engine shed visit. 
Use your database software to run a search on the client table to find this information. Sort the results in ascending order of tour number with a secondary sort on surname. Display the results showing all fields except adult child. Now I'm going to close this query and now I'm going to create a new one. Create, query design, add the table, close this one. Now we have to find everyone that's been booked for evening lecture or engine shed visit. We were supposed to add all the fields except the adult child. So I'm going to double click on everything but adult child. And now I'll have to say if this is the engine shed, this is here in the criteria field, I'm going to have to say yes. Remember, it was a yes or a no. So if they're book, it would come a yes. Now for the evening lecture, we also have to say yes. But I'm going to put the yes over here. And the reason is here we have an or criteria. So it's either yes for engine shed visit or for the evening lecture. Now let's run and see the results that we get. And you can see that the first person, he's booked for both. The next one is booked for both. The third one is booked only for the evening lecture and not for the engine shed visit. But as you can see, these should be the right results. And now we're going to have to show evidence for our query. And to do that, maybe I'll minimize it like this. It's better to crop it later. And you can see the 18 records that were found. And we're not displaying the field adult child. Now here it's necessary to open up the fields so we can see all the field names. Okay, so now I'm going to print screen. I press the print screen button on the keyboard. And we paste it. Control V or you right click and say paste. Go to the picture tools again, crop the image, and this should be good enough. We click and drag from the corner, and this is perfect. And as I said before, you can name the query, and this could be called engine shed or EL and ES, but remember the QRY in front of the name. Okay, and for this task you could get four marks. And now for the next task, uh, it says a new table is needed to store information about hotels in England used by train travelers. So we have to look at a file and they give us a data file. It's called hotels. And this is, this tells us how we should name the fields in the access table. So we're going to have to create a table with these field names so it can contain this data. And then we have to say what data type, what field size, uh, also justify two choices of data type types, indicate the table which field will be the key field, and that's a primary key, and justify the choice of the primary key field. So let's start creating the table. We open access. Now to create a new table, let's just close this query. Yes, I was going to save it. Q R Y, and it would be uh, evening lecture or engine ship visit. So this is fine. Okay. Now to create a new table, we go to create. We select here table, and we have to go to the design view. The table is going to be named Hotels, so it's TBL Hotels, okay. And then we have the structure of the table. Now the first field they give us is Hotel Name. And that was text, so the data type is text. The next one is Code, also a text field. It had one letter and a uh, few numbers. Uh, town. Also should be text field, telephone, also text because it had spaces in it. We call it alphanumeric, 
and then it has the email field and also text because of the ad symbol. And uh, also we always use the data type text for text and numbers. And if it's only numbers, we can have it the number field. If it's date and time, we use date and time. If it's to do with money calculation, we do currency. An auto number is sometimes used when you want to create a, a primary key field. Yes and no, like we have seen used before. And then I'll show you later on how to use the lookup wizard. Now, all of these fields are text fields. We also had to say the field size. And it just has to, if, if you look at the text, you can see the name of the hotels. Now, none of these are more than 15, 20, so we could say field size 20 letters. Code is one letter and uh, four numbers, so that could be five. So let's start. And we say hotel name. Let's say maximum should be around 30. Can't be much more than that. Code, we can put six or five. Let's just put it exactly the way it was. It was one letter and four numbers. Town, uh, the name of the town can't be much more than 30, 40, so we could put here 40 also. Telephone number, maybe 10 to 15 maximum. We can also count the numbers and, and put the maximum there. Email also should be around 15, 20. So I'll put 25, just to be sure. And now we have the table ready with data types set and the field size. Now we have to justify two choices of data types and that could be done by thinking about the email. We chose the text because it's got only it's got symbols and letters. Uh, for the code we also chose text because it has both letters and number and a number. Now that is already done then the justification. Next question is indicate the table which field will be the primary key or the key field. And that I would change. In this case, we're not going to have it the hotel name as codes can be unique for each record. And you can check in the text file if the code, yes, it's H1234, the next one H21. It's not the same numbers. So this code could be used as a primary key as it's unique for each record. Then we have to justify the choice of key field, and that we could, can explain by saying that it's unique for each record. And if we have the Word document open, we will have to show the structure of our table. So we press print screen, then we press Control V, and we could crop it here. Not much needed. Let's do it anyway. We don't need the rest of the table view, so I'm going to open it up a little bit more. Now here, you will have to use a text box to explain your choice of a primary key. So you can use this text box to say, I have chosen the code field as it is unique for the records in the table. And you could also make it very clear. You can go and get the shapes, get an arrow. Now here, we can't even see the primary key. So go back, make sure you open this, and you can, oh, it's not because of this one. The reason is I forgot to put the primary key. So, if you see you do an error like this, just fix it, print screen again, go back and paste the information correctly. So we can delete, we'll paste the information like it should be, and here you can point to the primary key. Okay, the next question is, Open the database train travelers and create the table. We've done that already. Yes, uh, the last question is train travelers gives a rating from one to five to each hotel. A new field is required with this structure. And they show us the structure. Now we have to create a field and we know it's called rating. 
and it's a numeric field. But what they want you to do now is to create a drop down box. Uh, it says here, make sure you can see the creation of the drop down selection list. So, what I'm going to do straight away is use the lookup wizard and I'm going to say, I will type in the values that I want. Next. Here you type in the values and they have it on the paper. It says it's one up until five. So, four, five. Next. It's called rating. Finish. And you have to show that it's a drop down list. So I'm going to go to the table view. And as you can see, here's our table. Here's the rating field. And it has a drop down list. And you can choose from it. In this case, you'll have to show both this. You can print screen it now. Print screen. Go into the Word document. We have to show your evidence. And paste it. Now this is perfect to show the drop down box. But you also have to show your results for design view. So we open the access table. We're going to go to the design view. And here we have the rating selected. We have to choose lookup. And here we can see the values. The row source is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's a combo box. We print screen this. And that means we have the evidence that we did this correctly, both in the design view and in the table view. And that's it for the database activity for this exam. And for the total for all the activities, you could have gotten 22 marks. Thank you. I hope it was useful. And if there's anything else you're struggling with, please send me comments and I'll try to make a tutorial for whatever you need.